Okay everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I am going to show you how to ferment your own vegetables. I am doing today's video in collaboration with the Homesteaders of America in response to what is going on in our country. There is a lot of need for people to learn basic skills at home that can help to sustain their families in times of crisis. I've partnered with some amazing people here on YouTube. You can check out the entire playlist. It's going to go from Monday through Saturday. So all this week, there's several videos every day that are part of this collaboration. It's almost like a free course. First of all, why would you want to ferment your own vegetables? I've shared tons of recipes here on my YouTube channel about fermenting vegetables, fermenting dairy. It's something that we commonly do in our kitchen. We eat sauerkraut all the time, but why? Whenever you ferment something, it makes the nutrients more readily available for your body. It is high in probiotics. So the same reason people take probiotic pills is the same reason that you would see some benefits from consuming your own homemade fermented vegetables. You can ferment almost any vegetable, not saying you necessarily should. I've tried fermenting butternut squash, that was a no-go, but I've fermented several things that were absolutely delicious. It adds a depth of flavor that we're really not used to in our culture. We don't, and here in America, eat a whole lot of those sour foods. It also helps to preserve food. So if you're gonna be growing a big garden this summer, you can keep fermented foods for four months up to a year in a cool, dark place, and all of those great nutrients and probiotics are maintained. What do you need for fermenting vegetables? What equipment do you need? There's lots of things out there. There are airlock fermentation tools. There are weights, there are lids. I'll show you a few of the things that I have, but then I'm going to let you in on a little secret that you don't actually have to have anything at all. So right here in my kitchen, I have a few tools. I have these lids. They're, I believe, called mason tops. The essential thing they do is they let out the gases that happen during fermentation while not letting bugs and other contaminants get into the vegetables. There's just a tiny hole at the top. It's almost like a bottle nipple. And then they go on any wide mouth jar, whether it's the short ones, tall ones, depending on what you're fermenting, half gallon ones, and you can just use a ring. So those are handy, but you do not have to have them. What I do instead, if I have used all of these, if I have a lot of ferments going, is just a loose lid. That allows nothing to really get in, but it still allows things to escape. So that's an option as well. Also, I have weights. These are to keep veggies below the surface because they cannot be exposed to air or they will mold. That is the key with fermenting. These are necessary if you don't have any cabbage leaves on hand, which I'm gonna show you how you can use cabbage leaves, or if you don't want to buy these, you can put rocks in a Ziploc bag. That's what I used to do before I bought weights. These are handy. They also only work in wide mouth jars. You can't fit them into regular mouth mason jars, but you don't have to have them. I do have a few sets of them over the years. I have collected a few fermenting tools that I find helpful. I do have them all linked in my Amazon shop. So amazon.com slash shop slash farmhouse on Boone, the current fermenting tools that I have. But if you want to get started, you want to try this and you don't want to invest anything because you want to make sure that you like the fermented foods, that is totally optional. The next question you might have is, do I need a starter culture? Should I use whey? Should I just use salt, which is the process of lacto fermentation? I have tried many things over the years, but more than anything else, I just use good old fashioned salt. So the way that the process works, essentially there are bacteria living on all vegetables. And what you're trying to cultivate in fermenting vegetables is for that good bacteria to take that over, to take over the vegetables. And the way for that process to happen is to allow it to ferment at room temperature. But if you don't have something else to stop the bad bacteria, it will take over instead. Salt is that agent that does that. The lacto portion of lactose fermentation refers to lactobacillus. That is the type of bacteria that is living on plants that you are trying to cultivate. So you might buy probiotics and you might have similar words, different strains of bacteria that are in that. 
That's what you are creating whenever you ferment vegetables by stopping the process of bad bacteria taking over. And salt is perfect for inhibiting that. As you're gonna see here, as I show you how to ferment a few different vegetables, I either use salt and water, so I create a brine by dissolving salt and water and then pouring it over vegetables, or in the case of sauerkraut, it has some liquid on it whenever you mash it with salt it does produce its own brine. And then after a, a certain amount of time, the vegetable will start to taste tangy, sour, it'll have that flavor that you recognize if you've ever eaten sauerkraut. And then you just, after that, store it in a cool dark place to stall the bacteria growth. How long does fermentation take? It totally depends on the vegetable. For something like fermented salsa, which I love to make, I usually only leave that out because it has tomatoes for about three-ish days. I do have a recipe on my blog and here on my YouTube channel, so I will link all of that down in the description box because I didn't make it in today's video. Things like cucumbers, again, a shorter amount of time, but sauerkraut, I might leave out on the counter for up to a month. The flavor just develops more and more. I also do believe that you can taste a little bit. That's what I do, but of course you risk introducing other bacteria, but that is something that I do. I will taste it and see how it is because in the summer, things will go a lot faster. In the winter, they'll go a little bit more slowly, usually about a week for sauerkraut and it's tasting really good. Now, if you don't leave it long enough, it'll just taste salty and not fermented. And that's a big distinction that you want to avoid. Let's dive in. I'm gonna show you how to make a few fermented vegetables. So to start, I make a brine by dissolving four tablespoons of salt in about a half a gallon of filtered water. Now what I do is I take a half a gallon of water, I put a little bit into a saucepan and dissolve the salt and then add it back together. That way I don't have boiling hot water because you do want it to cool before pouring it over the vegetables. Otherwise you will cook all of that good bacteria that is supposed to jumpstart this process right from the beginning and you won't end up with anything delicious or beneficial. If you're going to be doing a whole bunch, so let's say it is the middle of summer and we're past this mess, hallelujah, but you have a whole bunch of different kinds of vegetables from your garden that you want to preserve and ferment. I recommend making a gallon or two gallons of brine right from the start and then it'll make the whole process really fast. Cut the carrots into strips add them to a jar and cover them with brine. To make sure that none of the carrots peak above the brine, you either need to add a weight, or I was going to be doing sauerkraut, so I just borrowed a leaf from the cabbage to hold them down. That's what you can do, but sometimes you're not going to be fermenting carrots at the same time as cabbage. In that case, you might not have a cabbage leaf. You'll need to use some kind of weight, even if it's just some rocks in a Ziploc bag. Put a loose lid or a fermenting lid on, set it to the side and allow it to ferment at room temperature. The process for jalapenos is the exact same. My husband and I love these. We will with almost any meal just get a few jalapenos out and we enjoy them with our food. The kids obviously think they're too spicy. But same process, cut up the jalapenos, add the brine, make sure they're submerged below the brine with some kind of weight or cabbage leaf and allow it to ferment. Cabbage is slightly different. I use my food processor. My sister, she ferments a ton too. She prefers the taste of it not being shredded so finely, so she doesn't. But no matter how you slice it, either finely chop the cabbage or put it through a food processor, I normally am doing it in pretty much bulk, so I feel like it's just faster. I core the cabbage, put it through my food processor, add the salt, and then massage the salt in for it to create juices to make a brine. Now, typically my rule of thumb, depending on the size of the cabbage, if it's a medium to large cabbage, about a tablespoon of salt per cabbage. Now, if they're smaller, you might wanna reduce that down a little. At this point, I kinda of just taste a little bit. I've never had an issue, it's always good. But there is a chance that if you don't have enough salt, bad bacteria could take it over. And there's a chance that if you have too much, it can get mushy. But don't let this worry you. If it tastes like sauerkraut, you should be good to go. And again, I don't a lot of times even measure and I've never had a problem. So I'm just putting those warnings out there but I don't wanna scare you into thinking that you're going to mess it all up because it's a very basic process. Now after you've massaged it, it has a brine, 
The next step is to pack it into a jar. Now for reference, about five heads of cabbage will make a gallon of sauerkraut. That's typically what I've found with medium sized cabbages. Today I had three, so I made a half gallon and then I had a little bit left, so I did another small jar. To make sure it's submerged below the brine, I pack it really, really tight. I just use my fingers and as I add at the end, I just keep pushing harder and harder and the brine will come up and once it's packed as tight as I can get it, I add a weight or a folded cabbage leaf or both, a fermenting lid, and then I set it aside. One tip is as the cabbage sits, it tends to let out more juices. So you never wanna put this straight on your counter without something to contain the overflowing juices. On my blog, I have an entire section. So if you go to fermosamoon.com and in the main navigation, click food from scratch, there'll be a drop down menu. You click on fermented foods, you can start scrolling through. A lot of times I get the question, it's too salty. Usually that has to do with not fermenting it long enough. You're going from just a salty vegetable over to a fermented vegetable. That process takes time. It's not a one size fits all because in the summer it might be 80 in your house or close to it. In the winter, if you're frugal like us, it might be closer to 65, 68. The process will be slower depending on that temperature difference, sometimes maybe other factors as well. In our kitchen right now, we have a vintage stove and it, it makes the whole kitchen a little bit warmer. So things tend to go a little bit faster. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed this. I want to encourage you that fermenting vegetables isn't as scary as it sounds. You need very minimal tools, very minimal ingredients. You can ferment almost anything. You can play around with it. Add some caraway seeds to your cabbage. I've seen people add apples. That gives it a really great flavor mixing up different vegetables, herbs. You can use your creativity. It will taste so delicious and be wonderful for gut health. Don't forget to check out the full Homesteaders of America playlist. So much value packed in one week. This is creators, video creators coming together to teach people skills in such a necessary time. I've had so many people ask me, what do I do if I don't have any yeast? The stores are all sold out. Or what, I, what do I do if I don't have any flour? It's in times like this that I've never appreciated my 50 pound bag of grains, my grain mill, and my sourdough starter more. And I have so much more to learn. I can't wait to watch the other people talk about milking goats and gardening. And also when my husband came in yesterday with three dozen eggs, so thankful that we have these skills in this place, even if you don't live on a farm. We had the same thing going on at our last house on a quarter acre. We had a dozen chickens in the backyard, a sourdough starter, a grain mill. These skills will serve you well no matter what, but especially in times like these. All right, well check out that playlist. Thank you so much. If you've came from the other people in this collaboration, welcome. Please hit that subscribe button. I make two videos every week here in my farmhouse on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home.